In this video, we're talking about how to use Riemann sums to estimate the area under a curve. And in this particular problem, we're going to be using right endpoints. Remember that with a Riemann sum, we can use left endpoints, right endpoints, or midpoints. This is going to be an example where we use right endpoints. And we've been given this function, f of x is equal to 2 minus x squared. We've been asked to use a Riemann sum with right endpoints to estimate the area under this function. So if we were to graph this function, we want to find the area underneath this function or between this function and the x-axis. And we're interested in finding the area under the function over the interval x equals 0 to x equals 2, so when x is between 0 and 2. And the fact that we've been told that n equals 4 tells us that we're going to be dividing this interval x equals 0 to x equals 2 into four subintervals, and those will define our rectangles. So first of all, let's back up a second and talk about what a Riemann sum actually is. A Riemann sum is just one method that we can use to approximate the area under a curve. So when we use a Riemann sum, we're getting an approximation or an estimation because we're using a finite number of rectangles to define the area underneath a curve. Later on, we're going to learn about how to take an integral, and an integral allows us to find exact area under a curve. But before we learn how to do that, we're going to learn first how to approximate the area under a curve, which we can do using Riemann sums and a few other methods. Right now, though, we're talking about Riemann sums. So let's get into what this particular function looks like so that we can get a better understanding of what we're talking about here. So if we graph this function, f of x equals 2 minus x squared, this is what it looks like, and it should make sense because we have negative x squared, which tells us we're going to have an upside down parabola. And this 2 here tells us that the parabola is going to intersect the y-axis at y equals 2. So 2 minus x squared, the curve looks like this. We're interested in the interval x equals 0 to x equals 2. So if we want to just go ahead and draw some boundary lines here, we're interested in x equals 0, which of course is along the y-axis, 2x equals 2, which is at this point right here. So we're interested in the area under the curve, but inside of this box, or between the left-hand side of this box and the right-hand side of this box. We've also been told that we're dividing the interval between x equals 0 and x equals 2 into four subintervals because we have n equals 4 here. Well, after you draw a picture of the graph and you define the interval, your next step is always going to be to find delta x. And the way that we find delta x is with this formula here. Delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n. Keep in mind here that the left-hand side of the x interval is going to be a, that the right-hand side of the x interval is going to be b, and we've already been given n is equal to 4. So if we want to find delta x, we're just going to say delta x is equal to b minus a, or in this case 2 minus 0, so 2 minus 0, divided by n when n is equal to 4, so divided by 4, which is going to leave us with 2 divided by 4, which simplifies to 1 half. So delta x is going to be the width of each rectangle, n is going to be the number of rectangles that you have. So what we know now is that we're going to use four rectangles, each with a width of one half, to estimate the area underneath the curve. So if we go back to our picture here, we know we have the interval x equals 0 to x equals 2. If we're going to divide that interval into four subintervals because n is equal to 4, we could divide it in half to get it into two subintervals. Then we could divide those in half again to get to four subintervals. So now we have here subinterval 1, subinterval 2, subinterval 3, and subinterval 4 for subintervals. If you don't have a picture of the graph or you find it difficult to divide this into four subintervals just based on the picture or the value of n, all you need is the value of delta x to find where these subintervals are divided. Because delta x is equal to 1 half, so what you want to do is start at the left hand side of your interval, x is equal to 0, or this value right here, x equals 0, and then add delta x to that. So if we say 0 plus 1 half, we get to 1 half, and we know that our first subinterval ends right here. Then we just keep adding delta x, so if we add 1 half again, we get to 1. If we add 1 half again, we get to 1 and a half, or 3 halves. And if we add 1 half again, we get to 2, and we know we're done because we hit the right hand side of the interval, which is x equals 2. So now we can say that our first subinterval starts at 0 and goes to 1 half, so we can say 0 to 1 half. That our second subinterval starts at 1 half and goes to 1, 
that our third subinterval starts at 1 and goes to 3 halves, and that our fourth subinterval starts at 3 halves and stops at 2. And notice here that the first number and the last number match the original interval here, 0 to 2. Now because we've been asked in the problem to use right endpoints, what we want to do is take the right hand side of each of these intervals. So that's just going to be everything in this column here, the right hand side of each interval. So the right hand side of this interval is 1 half, the right hand side of this interval is 1, the right hand side of this interval is 3 halves, and the right hand side of this interval is 2. If we were asked to use left endpoints, we would take 0, 1 half, 1, and 3 halves. If we were asked to use midpoints, we would take the value halfway between or midway between our left and right hand endpoints of the subintervals. So midway between 0 and 1 half would be 1 fourth, so the midpoint here would be 1 fourth. The midpoint between 1 half and 1 would be 3 fourths, so we would take 3 fourths. You get the idea here, but we're using right endpoints, so we're going to take these right hand values here. So now here's what we're doing when we say we take right hand endpoints. We're interested in the right endpoints of each rectangle that sits in these subintervals. So we have this first subinterval from 0 to 1 half. So if we draw a rectangle that has its base between 0 and 1 half, in other words in this first subinterval, and we come up and we want the rectangle to meet the function at 1 half because we're interested in the right hand endpoint. So we're interested in the rectangle whose right endpoint touches the graph at x equals 1 half because we're checking the right hand endpoint which is x equals 1 half. So x equals 1 half was right here. It's the right hand side of this subinterval. So we draw our rectangle all the way up to the function until the right side of the rectangle meets this graph. And what you could do is you could just come here to the right hand side of this first subinterval, which is 1 half. You could come up until you get to the function. You could plot a point right here, and then you know that that would be the upper right hand corner of this rectangle, and you could draw in your rectangle. So same thing here if we go to our next subinterval, 1 half to 1. The right hand side of that subinterval is 1. So we come here to x equals 1. We come up to the graph until we meet it, and that's that point right there. And then what we want to do is draw a rectangle whose upper right hand corner meets that point right there, and whose base sits in that subinterval, 1 half to 1. Now for our third subinterval, 1 to 3 halves, we know the right hand endpoint is 3 halves, the right side of that subinterval is 3 halves. So if we come here to 3 halves or 1 and a half, and we go find the function's value at that point, well it's right here, it's actually below the x-axis, which means that our rectangle is also going to sit below the x-axis. We still want to draw the rectangle that's in that interval, we just want to bring the corner to that point that we drew. And then for the last subinterval, we know that it ends at x equals 2. So we come over here to x equals 2. We find the function's value at x equals 2. It's all the way down here. Then we want to draw our rectangle that sits in that subinterval from 3 halves to 2 and bring that right endpoint down to the point that we just drew. Now you can see how these rectangles are going to estimate the area underneath the curve. If we were going to find exact area over this interval x equals 0 to x equals 2, we would be looking for the area bounded by the curve and this interval. So that would be this area right here. And then we would, because it's below the x-axis, we would subtract out this area right here and that would give us exact area under the curve. But we're using rectangles to estimate the area under the curve. So instead of calculating that exact area using an integral, we're going to use these rectangles and what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of this rectangle here and each of the other three rectangles and when we find the area of each of these rectangles we're going to add the area together to get an estimation of the area underneath the curve. So how do you find the area of a rectangle? Well you find the area of a rectangle by multiplying length times width. Well we already know that the width of each of these rectangles is the same. It's delta x. It's one half. We know that the width of each rectangle is one half. The height, if we use right endpoints, can be given by the value of the function 
at each of these four points because if we find this y value right here at each of these four points using our right endpoints, then we can say that this is the length of the rectangle and delta x is the width of the rectangle. Multiply those two together and get the area. If we find this value right here, we can say this is the length of the rectangle. Multiply that by the width of the rectangle, delta x, and we can get the area of that rectangle. So if we find the area of all four rectangles individually and then add them together, it'll give us an estimation for the area under the curve. So how do we do that mathematically? Well, it's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is take these right endpoints right here and we plug them into our function f of x to find the value of the function at that point. That'll give us the y value at each of those purple dots that we drew along the graph. Then we'll just multiply that value by delta x. That'll give us total area and we'll add them together. The fancy formula for a Riemann sum is this formula right here. And it's actually maybe a little more confusing than it needs to be. But you can see here that you have r sub n. So r just stands for Riemann sum n is the number of rectangles that you're using or the number of subintervals that you're using. In our case, that's 4. So our Riemann sum would be r sub 4 is equal to, here we have our summation notation or sigma. We're going to have i equals 1. And again, here we have n. We know that n is equal to 4. We're using 4 rectangles. Then we have f of x sub i, which we'll talk about in a second, multiplied by delta x, or the width of each rectangle. We already know that that's 1 half, but we'll just call this delta x for now. This i notation, or this x sub i notation, basically just think about it as the interval's number. So if i is equal to 1, that would be the first interval. If i is equal to 2, that would be the second interval. i equals 3 would be the third interval, and i equals 4 would be the fourth interval, or the fourth rectangle. So when we say f of x sub i, we're saying x sub 1, 2, 3, and 4, all the way up to here n is equal to 4. And this f of x sub i notation, this is just the length of each rectangle, and delta x is the width. So you're just saying length times width to get area of each rectangle. And you say this summation here because you're adding together the area of each rectangle. So we could rewrite this like this. We could say r sub 4 is going to be equal to, we can drop the summation notation. We'll say delta x here, and we'd write it like this. To get f of x sub i, we just start by plugging in this first right endpoint. So we plug that into our original function f of x, and we get 2 minus 1 half squared. Well, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 2 minus 1 fourth is 7 fourths. So we get 7 fourths. Then we're going to add to that whatever we get when we plug in our second right endpoint. So plugging 1 into f of x, we get 1 squared is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. Plugging in 3 halves to our original function, we get 3 halves squared, which is 9 fourths. 2 minus 9 fourths is a negative 1 fourth, so we get minus 1 fourth. Then we plug in our last right-hand endpoint, and that's 2. And so we plug 2 in for x, we get 2 squared is 4. 2 minus 4 is a negative 2, so we say minus 2. And it makes sense that these first two values would be positive and the second two values would be negative because if we look again at our graph, the first two rectangles are above the x-axis, the second two rectangles are below the x-axis. And basically what we're saying here is that this height right here is 7 fourths, we just found that, that the height here is 1, that the height of this rectangle is 1 fourth, and that the height of this rectangle is 2. Those are the values that we just found, 7 fourths, 1, negative 1 fourth, and negative 2. And we're going to multiply each of those by the width because this is the height of each of the rectangles. This is the width of the rectangle, delta x. So when we distribute delta x across each of these, we're representing the area of all four rectangles. So delta x is going to be 1 half, so we get 1 half multiplied by. Let's go ahead and find a common denominator within our brackets here. So because we have 7 fourths and a negative 1 fourth, let's make the common denominator 4. So instead of writing 1, we'll write 4 over 4. And instead of writing negative 2, we'll write negative 8 over 4. Now we can say 7 fourths plus 4 fourths is 11 fourths. Minus 1, we get 10. Minus 8, we get 2. So we end up with 2 fourths. Well, of course, 2 fourths is just 1 half, so we get 1 half times 1 half, and we can say r sub 4 is equal to 1 fourth. 
one fourth then, or we could call this one fourth square units because we're talking about area. One fourth square units is an estimation of the area underneath that curve which we found using a Riemann sum with four rectangles and the right endpoints of those rectangles. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource whether you're struggling or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.